Hi guys. So today I would like to actually discuss Ito's integral for simple integrands. Okay. So once we actually cover uh, simple integrands, we can then in the next lecture uh, talk about more complicated integrands and talk about Ito's integrals for them. Okay. In order to develop the theory for Ito's integral, let's basically consider a probability space given by capital omega, which is our sample space, <clears throat> a sigma algebra, and a probability measure. We, this basically probability space is also equipped with a filtration, which basically captures information available to our model at time t. Okay, so this is our probability space and there is a filtration in it for t greater than or equal to zero, right? Now, if you remember when we constructed a Brownian motion, we said that Brownian motion paths given by WT depend on the outcome of the experiment. They depend on omega. So if we conduct the experiment, we're going to get some value of omega. And depending on the value of omega, we'll get a path of a Brownian motion. Okay, the path of a Brownian motion depends on omega. And if we conduct the experiment again, we'll get a different value of, or different path of a Brownian motion, okay? So the way it's working is we basically conduct an experiment, we get an omega, and depending on the value of omega, we get a path of a Brownian motion, okay? <clears throat> Let's also define another adapted stochastic process given by delta of t. Okay, this delta of t is basically it's adapted stochastic process. That basically means that it is ft measurable okay so the value of this process can depend on the information available at time t but it cannot depend on information beyond time t okay that's what we mean by the process being adapted is that this is basically ft measurable okay so again we basically conduct an experiment we get some value of omega and depending on the value of omega we get a path of a Brownian motion and we also get a path of a adapted stochastic process. Okay. Now if we conduct the experiment again, we'll get a different path of uh, Brownian motion and a different path of adapted stochastic process. Okay. So both of these are stochastic processes actually, right, which depend on the outcome of the experiment. Now, in this particular lecture today, we want to actually make sense of, or, or we want to define, what is Ito's integral, which is given by 0 to t, delta of t, dw of t. Okay? Here, the integrator and the integrand both are stochastic processes. Okay? And this basically is called Ito's integral. And right now, in this lecture, we want to actually talk about Ito's integral for simple processes, okay, which I'm going to define in just a moment, okay. So in this lecture, we're going to only tackle simple processes, and then in the later lectures, we're going to actually talk about more complicated processes, okay. So just to discuss the setup once again, we basically have a probability space, and we have a filtration. We conduct an experiment, we get some value of omega, and depending on the value of omega, we get a path of Brownian motion, and get path of a adapted stochastic process. We wish to figure out what we mean by this. This basically is the Ito's integral. And right now we're going to talk about Ito's integral for simple integrands. And I'm going to show you what exactly I mean. Now, if, if we, you know, in, in ordinary calculus, if you basically had a function which was differentiable with respect to, C, to, to t, let's, let's say that we had a function g of t, and this was differentiable with respect to t. And if you wanted to compute 0 to t delta of t d of g of t, okay, where g t is basically a differentiable function with respect to t. We could have computed this as a simple integral delta of t g dash of t dt. And we were able to do this because this was differentiable with respect to t. Okay, But we can't do this for uh, uh, for, for Ito's integral because our Brownian motion is not differentiable with respect to t, okay? So now we need to actually construct um, the Ito's integral in a different way and I'm going to show you how it's done. 
Okay guys, so now what we want to do is you want to construct Ito's integral 0 to t of delta of t dw of t, right? Now, for the first thing what we want to do is you want to actually partition this time from 0 to t into n number of time steps. So let's do that. Let's say t0 is less than or equal to t1, less than or equal to t2, all the way to less than or equal to t of n, where t of n is equal to t, t0 is equal to 0. Okay? So you basically have partitioned time into n number of time steps, and these time steps don't have to be equal. So t1 minus t0 need not be equal to t2 minus t1. Okay? But they can be. I mean, they can be equal, but they need not necessarily be. Now, let's first define what this simple adapted stochastic process actually looks like. And for that, I'm going to just try to draw it first. This is delta of t. This is time. Let's assume this is, this is time 0. This is t1. This is t2. This is t3. All the way. Okay? So the simple adaptive stochastic process, as we said, basically depends on the outcome of our omega. Okay, so we're going to conduct an experiment, we're going to get some outcome omega. And depending on omega, we'll get a path of a adaptive stochastic process. So here I'm going to actually try to draw one particular path. Okay, but we, if we toss another omega, we'll get a different path. Okay, because this basically is adaptive stochastic process and it depends on the, the value of omega. Okay. So just for, for this particular example, it's going to be a very simple process. This process will actually take a value. It, delta t would be constant between any time step tj and tj plus 1. Okay. Here, basically it includes the value of tj but does not include the value of tj plus 1. That's what we mean by this open bracket. Okay. Closed here and open here. So what basically this means is, let's assume that we basically toss an omega and we're trying to plot one such path of our adaptive stochastic process. Let's assume that at time zero, we basically va select a value of, or, or we get a value of our adaptive stochastic process right here. And this will remain constant till T1, okay? And let's denote this by a you could say a uh, open zero or whatever, right? I mean, basically, it's 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 not filled. It's it's open. This is basically denoting that this basically holds true for all values from t j, that means zero, to t one, but not including t one. So in this time interval, basically, the the value of this process is constant. Okay. Now, now let's say in the next time step, <clears throat> this basically jumps to here. And again, it remains constant in du during this time step. Again, in the next time step, it can come back and come back down. Okay. So this basically process is adaptive. So it basically depends on the information available to us till time t. So for example, if you want to figure out what the value of delta t between 0 and t1 is, it only depends on the information available to it time 0. Okay. And if you want to figure out what is the value of delta t at between time t1 and t2,